What's the difference between Windows 10 and malware? Now I think by now we all know malware not only can slow your computer down, but malware can also feed information to servers that you don't know about. Guess what Windows 10 does? Both of those things. When I had Windows 10 installed on several of my main computers, not only did my computers feel slower, especially with that user interface, but my computers also, from what I found out, were actually sending information to Microsoft servers, and this is a known documented fact. And in fact, Microsoft not only said that they weren't going to stop data collection, but in fact, Microsoft also said that they don't see what's wrong with it. Yeah, that's like an oil company saying they don't see what's wrong with fracking. Now, once computer users found out exactly what was wrong with Windows 10, they either chose to stay on 7 or 8.1, or downgrade back to those operating systems, either through Windows 10's downgrade feature, which only gave you a month time window to do it, or by using a Windows CD to do a clean install, which causes you to lose all your files unless you back up your information. So anyways, what happened with this is Microsoft found out that people weren't upgrading to Windows 10 after the initial hype, and so they've been going through more and more aggressive measures to get people to upgrade to Windows 10. And this time around, Microsoft is actually now using the whole Get Windows 10 app to display a dialog box saying, Upgrade now or upgrade tonight. That's right, you don't have any other option unless you close out the dialog box. But do you think many people are going to see that you can close out the dialog box? Because from what I've seen, there are many Windows users out there who don't even know what the start button is. You'll ask them, okay, click the start button, and they'll say, where's the start button at? Or you'll ask them to copy and paste the file here, and they'll say, how do I copy paste? And the second their computer gets upgraded to Windows 10, not only are they going to lose a lot of control over their computer, but they're also going to be thrown off when everything is switched around again. And this was all because they didn't know how to close out that dialog box or go online and download the whole Windows 10 blocker script. And I'll actually give you a link to that in the description of this video. And due to this aggressive upgrade pushing, which causes many people to inadvertently click yes, people are going to computer repair places and saying, can you downgrade me to what my computer came with? I've seen this at first hand in real life, people going to these computer repair places and asking them to downgrade them to Windows 8.1 or Windows 7, mostly Windows 7 though. Now, of course, there is a fix to the problem that is Microsoft Windows as of now, and it does not involve just duct taping Windows and hoping that all these tweaks just work. I mean, Windows 10 can actually bypass your host's file, and it can connect to Microsoft servers anyway to the point where you need to go into your router and set it to block these web addresses, and the thing is, that's just unacceptable. Thankfully, there's another operating system out there that respects what you want as a computer user. Now, what's this operating system called, you may ask? It's called Linux. Now, Linux is a free operating system that doesn't cost a dime, and you can get it just from downloading it and putting it on a disk. Now, here's the cool part about Linux is that there are quite a few versions of it. However, there are some that are also incredibly easy for someone who does not know anything about computers, such as your mom or grandma to use. For example, there's Linux Mint Mate, which will not only work on their e-machine's computer, but it also has a similar look and feel to Windows, which means that they won't be suffering from baby duck syndrome when you give them their computer. Linux allows you to also use your favorite web browser, VLC for playing audio and video files, and of course it has LibreOffice, which is pretty much Microsoft Office, but it comes with the operating system and you don't need to pay a single dime for it. And of course it lets you open and edit Microsoft Office documents. Linux also works with a wide variety of printers and Wi-Fi cards. In fact, I only have one Wi-Fi card that doesn't have any Linux drivers whatsoever, and it's also a USB Wi-Fi card. And every other Wi-Fi card I've owned, except for some real ancient stuff, has Linux drivers for it. And did I mention that Linux usually has many drivers for popular devices out of the box? 
If you have an AMD, Intel, or a good number of NVIDIA GPUs, it will work out of the box with no additional software required. However, the newest NVIDIA GPUs do require a certain Pertaya Prairie driver to be installed, but many popular Linux distributions have this driver, though you don't get supported as easily if you use said driver. And then I mentioned when stuff goes wrong in Linux, you can actually find out what's wrong easier instead of just seeing a cryptic error code, where if you Google it, you just get a bunch of Microsoft tech support people saying, did you try turning your router off and on? You know, like that kind of stuff. In fact, the only area where Linux really lacks in is gaming, and that's changing due to the fact that more and more Mac porting houses are porting their games to Linux, along with the fact that Steam now has a Linux version and has over 1,600 games, though most of them are forgettable indie games and aren't the big games that people want. But if you use your computer as a Facebook machine and all you ever do is play Minecraft, Team Fortress 2, and Gary's Mod with 100 Sonic the Hedgehog models, there's no reason to switch to Linux because Linux will do everything you want it to do, plus more. And you don't have to worry about any of your data being sent to servers or about forced upgrades, and that's all you need to know. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and install Linux, it's not that hard, and you don't need much intellect or skill to do it.